Okay, moving objects have momentum. The momentum can be calculated by you do doing mass times velocity. For example, this ball has a momentum of 10 times 5, which is 50 kilogram meters per second. In fact, this is plus 50 kilograms per meters per second because I'm going to define right as positive. This is important because momentum is a vector. So for example, this ball here will have a momentum of 5 times minus 2 because it's going in the opposite direction. I'm going to define left as negative. So this will have a momentum of minus 10 kilogram meters per second. Because so momentum is very useful because it can be used to find the velocities of objects in events like collisions and explosions. The law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum before an event equals the total momentum after an event. However, this equation can only be used if we're dealing with a closed system with no external forces. So what do I mean by a closed system? That means that there's nothing entering the system or leaving the system. Okay, so for example, these two cars, if we consider total momentum of them before and add them together, it will equal the total momentum after with all these debris flying off if you count the momentum of every single debris and particle. If you've got a debris that's flying away and you don't count that, then the total momentum before won't equal the total momentum afterwards if you count all, of, all the particles. Uh, no external forces. What do we mean by this? For example, in this explosion here, the total momentum was zero before. And afterwards, it should equal zero. However, we've got to keep in mind there's going to be external forces. So, for example, the Earth, that's going to be pulling down on both particles an external force. And that's going to accelerate everything downwards. So it's going to look like the particle has gained momentum downwards. In this case, it's not really a closed system. But in most cases, we don't deal with the gravitational field um, of the Earth. Okay, we've got a 10 kilogram mass moving at 5 meters per second. Class with a stationary 15 kilogram mass. The mass is joined together into one. Calculate the velocity of the joint mass. Okay, so firstly, separate the page into before and after. Draw the situation and start calculating the momentum of each individual component. So here we have the 10 kilogram mass moving at 5 meters per second, so it's got plus 50 kilogram meters per second because it's going towards right. The 15 kilogram mass isn't moving, so it's got zero momentum. So total momentum before the collision is 50 kilogram meters per second. So the total momentum after the collision should equal 50 kilogram meters per second, provided it's a closed system, there's no external forces. Um, however, the mass is joined together, so I need to come up with an expression for the momentum of the joint masses. So the mass is now is 25 because they're stuck together and they're moving at some unknown velocity v. So its momentum is 25v. So we know that 25v must equal 50. Okay, so solving this equation, we get v equals 2 plus 2 meters per second going towards the right. A very similar scenario again. Separate the patient before and after. Draw the picture. This time the 20 kilogram mass here is moving towards the left. So we need to be very careful here. So the total momentum before is going to be the 72 kilogram meters per second from the move. That's mass is going towards the right and that's positive. However, because mass is going towards the left, it's going to be minus 40 kilogram meters per second, giving us a total of plus 32 kilogram meters per second. So the overall momentum is still towards the right. The total momentum after the collision is still going to equal 32 kilogram meters per second. The mass is stuck together now again. So the total mass is 32 and there's some unknown velocity v. So the expression for that is 32v. So 32v must equal 32 kilogram meters per second. Solving that, we get a total velocity of one meters per second going towards the right. Okay, once again, read the scenario and draw a picture with before and after. In this case, the particles aren't sticking together. They're moving apart and the three kilogram mass is going towards the left. So again, you need to be very careful that if it's going towards the left, that you're using a negative number. So the total momentum in this case actually towards the left is minus two. So the total momentum after it should equal minus two kilogram meters per second as well. So coming up with expressions for the individual masses alone. So you can see the three kilogram mass has a negative momentum already. Add that together. So the minus 15.6 plus the 5v equals minus two. And then rearrange and solve for v. And you can see v is going to be a positive number, 2.72 meters per second, going towards the right. Okay, here's another typical question. We've got a gun being fired with a bullet inside it. 
uh, the bullet and the gun were initially stationary, so the total momentum of the force is actually zero. Of course, then you've got the bullet going towards a right at a really high speed. The only way of momentum to be concerned, we know, is that the gun has to recoil, has to go backwards. But let's do the math. So the total momentum before was zero, because nothing was moving. Total momentum must equal zero afterwards. If we work out the momentums of the individual objects afterwards, we've got the bullet moving with 25 kilogram meters per second towards the right. So, and then we've got the uh, expression for the gun, which is four times the unknown velocity. So if you add those two together, the momentum of those two objects after the event must equal the momentum before the event, so must equal zero. Rearranging this, we find that the velocity of the gun is minus 6.3 meters per second. So it's going towards the left. It's recoiling. Otherwise, momentum won't be conserved.